What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman here for Stochastic.com. Back again with the process. It is Tuesday, August 30th. It's a good one. We're going to dig into the baseball from last night. Not a lot going on elsewhere. Like, there's Premier League contests today. They don't look great. They're, they're okay if you're interested, but they, you know, they didn't give us anything good on the opening day of the season, so we're clearly not getting it on a Tuesday. We've got baseball contests that we've looked at already. So I think just digging into results from yesterday will be a little bit more fun. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to dig into results. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. That would help me out a ton. And then go check out Prize Picks, presenting sponsor of this show. If you go to prizepicks.com, use the promo code AWESEMO, A-W-E-S-E-M-O, you'll get up to $100 on your first deposit. And we got a bunch of stuff at Stochastic. I can't get comfortable today. We got a bunch of stuff at stochastic.com that could help you out with prize picks, including Odd Shopper, which I think would help out tremendously if you didn't have access to some of our prize picks specific stuff. That was hard to say. Prize picks specific stuff. Hmm, not easy. Anyway. Go check out prize picks, promo code AWESOMO. All right, so didn't have that good of a baseball day yesterday. You know, had a ton of burns and didn't have a ton of uh, the Cardinals. So that made it hard to get to the tippy tippy top. I did have a lot of the Diamondbacks, however. We're going to dig into that in a second. So what I've done what is what I normally do. I pulled the relay throw and I pulled the big mini max. I got the pitching exposures for both of those things. I got the... Uh, stack exposures for both. I've added my exposures in as well, so we could take a, a bigger look there. I, I think this type of review is something that we should be doing a little bit more often. So the first thing that I wanted to point out is sort of why I look at the things that I look at. And here's like the biggest piece of it. If we just look at the relay throw itself, and Corbin Burns will be the perfect example. Corbin Burns was 70.4% owned in the relay throw in the whole contest. But if you look at just the 150 maxers, what do I have filtered here? Is that a player or a stack? Clevenger. Okay. If you look at just the 150 maxers, you see a different tail. 82.4% owned by 150 maxers. Remember, 70.4 in the whole contest which means that it's lower than 70.4 for the people that didn't max the contest. We, we could look at it like this. So it's 82.4% for the 150 maxers. For everybody that didn't 150 max, 64 and a half. Think about that for a second. Think about that for a second. The people that are throwing in all these single bullets, are basically doing the exact opposite of what the pros are doing. Remember, 64.5% for non-maxers, 82.5% for the 150 maxers. So if you want to know, just right out of the gate, if you're trying to do research on this slate, if you're trying to understand DFS more, that's one of the first things that I would want to look at. What did the non-150 maxers do? in comparison to the 150 maxers. Now, do we see the same thing in the mini max? Let's see. Mini max, 76% of people that one that maxed the mini max had Corbin Burns. So right away, the 150 max number is quite a bit lower in the mini max than it is in the relay throw. So even the 150 maxers here, not doing as much as they should have. If we look at the opposite side of this equation, less than 150 lineups, 60.6% of the mini max had Corbin Burns. The giant gap. If you are like, this should just be setting off gigantic alarm bells to you guys. We know what 150 maxers do in comparison to the non max players in the mini max. We see that disparity be even bigger as you work your way up in tier. If you're playing contests like the mini max and you're not maxing it and you had like 20% Corbin Burns yesterday, you should be asking yourself, why did I set up my lineup the way that I did? Because as you step up in what is generally speaking going to be a harder and harder or more intelligent, both, both directions, 
you're likely to see more intelligence across the 150 maxers than the nons in the aggregate. Similarly speaking, the further you go up in dollar amount, the sharper those entries are going to be. All of that is pointing towards playing more Corbin, Corbin Burns. If you didn't yesterday, why is that? We'll get a lot of people in YouTube chat, watch Strategy Show, watch The Deeper Dive, watch Live Before Lock, where we would have said, Corbin Burns is projected for 60% ownership. And you just get fade, 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 fade. You see it. Everybody wants to snap, make those decisions. When in all actuality, the money, the sharpest people in this industry are showing you the exact opposite situation. Why is that? Why, why do we, if you see somebody being like, oh, that's a snap fade, that's a snap, gotta fade them, too highly owned. You're seeing the exact opposite in practice from the people that are, are willing to put their money where their mouth is, not a YouTube chat. Keep that in mind. What you're seeing in that chat is garbage, generally speaking. These results, this data that we look at here, this is the stuff that you need to pay attention to. This is the stuff that should let you know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong to a degree. Corbin Burns is the perfect example in this scenario. If you didn't 150 max, you played infinitely less Corbin Burns yesterday. If you played in a higher dollar contest, you played significantly more Cor Corbin Burns. Now this is gonna work for everything, but for particularly when we start to get those guys climbing in ownership, we see it all the time in chat. The people are trying to run away from that ownership. The sharpest players in the world aren't doing that. Is there a method to doing that? Absolutely. But that's a very specific play style, not a blanket statement. You're approaching every day with the same set of logic here. It, uh, the the Sean Zons of the world playing a lower owned stack against a pitcher with some ownership. It's not about how frequently can you cash. It's about how often are you in the best possible chance to win. And if you can corner the market on those days, that's a different portfolio. You're not necessarily just trying to be right over and over again. You want to maximize the spots when you are right. That's what happens there. So I've got my Excel sheet now. And I've got the 150 max ownerships on the screen. One that I really want to dig into that I f either just uh, like, it just makes me feel incredibly wrong. And I, I'd like to dig into it. We'll start on the, the stack side. Again, 83% five man stacks in the relay throw, 66% in the mini max. People in the mini max are just not stacking nearly enough. That, that's There's no way around that. Now, the Cardinals aggressively more owned in the relay throw than the mini max the blue jays quite a bit more owned the angels and the marlins basically unowned in the mini max much more owned in the relay throw to the opposite side minnesota appears to have been the sort of uh not sharp play aggressively owned in the mini max less so in the relay throw to a degree the yankees as well but the big plays what you wanted to be on yesterday st louis toronto the angels and the marlins to a lesser extent the cubs i had five percent aggregate st louis i was light on the cardinals i'll be honest with you i thought i had a bit more than that heading into lock um evidently that was not the case but i thought that i did I don't actually remember having 26% Toronto either. But the big piece here, I did get to the Cubs, which was positive. I did have the Angels at 5%, which was helpful. My big stand was the Arizona Diamondbacks. I had 9%. That worked out. And they were a mildly sharp team, but nothing too crazy. I'm really happy about my Toronto exposure. That one I like the most. I'm a little bummed I didn't have more St. Louis. Um... A little bummed I didn't have more Miami, but I'm glad that I got to the Angels in the proper way. And I had no Minnesota. That makes me feel really good. I picked out the team that was the worst option and did get away from them. That I feel pretty good about. The one that I got the most wrong, though, is the San Francisco Giants, who were basically unowned on last night's slate. And they popped in everything for me. Now... That's not necessarily great because I don't think that they're a very good team. 
to stack at least. Uh, I think they're troublesome because of their pinch hit risk. And it makes me think that I'm not taking into account the pinch hit risk enough. And that's what's causing me to get to a little bit more San Francisco because no one got there. We are talking about the second lowest owned team, just 13% in the aggregate. And they weren't particularly good. If you had Wade, Peterson, and Estrada, you were all right. But this was not a great spot at all. I got to look into whether I'm adjusting for pinch hit risk enough or not, because I think based on the way that my exposures went, that I should have been a little bit lighter on San Francisco, given where they rank. This is why we do these sorts of recaps. We need to try to figure out where the mistakes are. That to me, probably a mistake. Ultimately, I'm happy that I didn't get to Minnesota. I'm happy that I took an aggressive stand on Toronto. If we look at the pitching exposures, there's not much here to dig into. Burns, we looked at the example. He was massively underowned to most people. I had him. 78%, I'll take it. But Minimax 76, relay throw 82. You just had to have a lot of burns. You didn't need to have a lot of road on though. 32% owned in the Minimax, 28 in the relay throw. The biggest negative gap. He was someone that I was light on. I understood getting to him. I didn't have him projected all that well. It makes me feel good to know that this went in the right direction. But otherwise, everything else is pretty flat. Like Grove was a little bit more owned in the relay throw. That doesn't surprise me. He was somebody that I was heavy on. Barrios was a little bit more owned. I was light there. So I'm calling most of this a wash for pitching. I was kind of heavy on Michaelis. Maybe that would be a leak that I'm not entirely happy about. But I liked the way that he fit in the middle. It just turns out that I probably should have just tried to save or, you know, turn that into Barrios probably is the answer instead of Michaelis and opening up something a little bit more different on the hitting side. So I don't love the Michaelis exposure. Otherwise, I'm fine with pitching. On the hitting side, the lesson learned here is digging into pinch hit risk and lowering the roster ability of at least the Giants in this particular case. That's what I got here. Well, we don't need to look at baseball contests for today. I'm playing some tennis. So if you want to get into the tennis streets, we have tennis projections and ownership. So I think you guys should check that out. You could also play some EPL today. There's a four game soccer slate if you want to check that out. Uh, congrats to Hoop for winning last night's relay throw. That's all I got. So that's where we're at, guys. We're going to look at this a little bit deeper every day now. See if we can find those distinctions between 150 max and no 150 max. Higher dollar contests, lower dollar contest. We'll see where my stuff integrates into everything. And we'll just try to get better on a day-to-day -day basis. If we can get like a half percent better every day, that's a big time ask. That compounds a lot. I think we can do it. So thanks for joining me. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and then follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. We got a lot coming up here at stochastic.com. The amount of content that is going to be coming out once the football season kicks off is staggering. Be ready. Subscribe to all our channels. We are going to have you covered for DFS and betting content. And uh, if you want to try to do some of that DFS slash betting, Prize Picks is the spot to do it because it's like half one, half the other. So uh, go to Prize Picks, use the promo code Awesome. Peace, everybody.